Hello, everybody. This is episode 16 of ZK Live. I'm Zach Kenny, owner of ZK Painting, and this is just going to be me. Um, I think we're going to do this every Sunday going forward. It'll just be me by myself, and then on Tuesdays, we'll interview guests. Um, what's up, Seacoast? RI representing. Um, if you're on here, wave. Tell me you're here. This is going to be a sort of a Q&A. Uh, we're going to just pretty much answer questions. I'm going to talk about whatever is on my mind each week. Um, I have somebody actually um, sent me a DM and has an idea for a contest that we're going to start to run, I think. Um, it, was a, it was a pretty cool idea. So we'll be talking about that contest um, and just all things painting um, and business, um, life. I just finished up another beautiful um, face mask. Uh, thanks to my wife, I'm like obsessed with these things. On Sundays, I do them. And my skin's all smooth. Um, it was a, it's been a busy week. Um, worked yesterday too, and we are up to nine painters now. So managing all of that is a lot more work. Um, but it's exciting. We got a lot of stuff going on. Really cool projects. Um, up happy painter um we couldn't meet the deadline that a client wanted when they added a bunch more scope to a project so i was able to some of you might have seen my stories i was able to call chris from shoreline and they're helping us out and they sent 24 painters on saturday and i watched 24 painters attack a house in a way that was just so impressive um I told I texted Chris later. I was like, I'm so glad I'm not in competition with you. We don't we're not in the same area really, um, because man, watching Shoreline's painters paint uh, was something that was very impressive. It was like special operations, and everyone knew where they needed to be, um, and what was coming next, and where to fill in. And they were all working so hard and so flawlessly. Um, it's definitely something to aspire to um, as we grow keeping people I think there's there's a big there's a tough part of my business where we are trying to do really high quality painting and so that hot that like speed can tend to not be there um, and shoreline and there's another a few other contractors out there across the country who will who kind of defy that idea that doing high quality work has to be slow and you watch these guys work and they're working so hard. So that's kind of what we're going to be working on in the next six months to a year is like getting even more hustle and getting production faster. As we simplify our systems down, um, we're going to be working faster and faster within our paint system because um, right now it's been sort of complex. We've been doing a lot of it's sort of R&D over the years to like get to the level that we're at. Um, and now we're going to really try to work to, I'm going to try to work to make it, it all go faster. Um, again, everybody, thanks for joining us. Um, put your questions down and there's a way you can like put questions in here. Um, I'd love to answer them. I have a few questions that people have put up here. Um, so I guess we can kind of start from there. I'm excited for the week. We have a new construction interior project starting. I'm doing pH testing on it tomorrow night and meeting with the client just to make sure that everything is good to go. Tuesday, um, what's up Wild Acres? Tuesday, we're supposed to start spraying primer and back rolling everything and hopefully get that done and the ceilings coated and then come back in and put their trim in. Um, so yeah, we don't do a lot of, and this is like, this is not high end new construction. It's, uh, it's sort of like middle of the road, just quality painting. You know, it's, I think it's like a 3000 square foot house, like nothing crazy. Uh, we got to be very efficient in and out. Um, so that's going to be cool. I have a 1223 tip that we're going to be spraying our primer and our ceiling paint with. Uh, if you've not seen a tip like that, I'm going to do some videos. It puts out a lot of paint really fast. Uh, so it's perfect for spraying primer and back rolling. Uh, but you really have to know what you're doing. Um, the pump, our little 440 is going to be maxed out. There's no question. They'll be running hard. Um, and then we have that job that um, Jason, oh God, Jason, I have such this like brain fart with Jason and who I called James when I first, so we, I hired him 
sort of, uh, and, and just his name never stuck with me. It's so embarrassing. But Jason and I power washed the house last week. Uh, we're going to start staining on that house this week. Uh, we have some other painting to do up there too. Um, Tuesday, we're going to load into our gloss project uh, in Beacon Hill, which is really exciting. Um, and then Wednesday, Phil and Hollis are going to be spraying metal on that wall. Um, the builder has decided that he wants to take the risk and wants us to spray the wall as it is. Um, we are sort of recommending against doing that. Um, but he said if it doesn't work out, he will pay us to redo it. Um, so we're going to, we're going to do it. It's sort of borderline. The primer is still like having these micro cracks and there was lots of issues with the plaster the whole time. Um, there's no question button. All right. Does anybody know how the questions work? Somehow I have this little like icon that has question, a question mark and people have, um, I have questions in here, but they might be from my story from before. So yeah, if you have questions, just type them in the comments then. I don't know. I guess that it's just from my stories from before, uh, but I'll, I'll answer if I see them down in the comments. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be spraying metal this week. Um, we're going for it and we'll see what happens. Um, it sucks building a, trying to build a skyscraper on a weak foundation. Yeah, someone's question just popped up. Um, yeah, Wild Acres just got one up here. So they're working. Wild Acres, talk to XC and tell them how you did it. Um, oh yeah, there's a question mark box down there you can touch. There we go. So you guys see the same thing I see. Uh, just I can't ask the questions. Um, so yeah, we're going to be loading in making a, a, a plan. We're going to copy Chris and what they do. Um, and we're going to be putting like sheets of paper in each of the rooms with the process and the, and what's going on in each room. Although it, it is all the exact same thing everywhere. So, um, we may not put them in the rooms, but we'll put them, uh, we'll, we'll have, we're gonna have a plan, a very set plan. Um, uh, we're lucky though. It's, we're only doing one product, one color on this project. Um, it's a whole bunch of high gloss, uh, Hall and Lack Brilliant in uh, Piano Black. XC said, wondering if Armstrong Clark oil you use for hardwood decking is similar to Penafin in usage. Was wondering because we have to wipe Penafin. Uh, yes, it is similar to Penafin. Um, that's why we use, if you see that, that video, that's why we use those stain pads, but we did wipe, uh, we did wipe it off of all of the, the railings. Um, that, that's the most time consuming part of the whole process with the hardwoods is you're applying this thin, thin amount of stain. So for the decking boards, the stain pad is so valuable because you're able to spread it so much better than you can spread it with a brush that you don't have to go back and wipe, um, which is amazing. Um, we used to wipe all of our decks until I found that stain brush. Um, Shoreline makes it. There's a few companies that make them. It's a very thin, very thin um, pad that goes on a handle. Uh, there's a video that's it has a bunch of views now at this point. I mean, I'm wearing my flovers. People keep asking me if I'm wearing Gucci slippers. Those are not Gucci slippers. Um, those are $60 rubber like Crocs shaped like loafers that I'm in love with. They're called flovers. And uh, I love my flofers. Um, they're so comfortable. I, I like flip flops, but they're not as professional. Um, I like my feet to be free and open to the world. Um, so the flofers are a great, I, I did another video. I just posted today. I was wearing them as well and they're 60 bucks. I'll go through a few pairs this summer, probably get some paint on them. But no big deal. Um, saw the video with the pads have learned to saturate and wipe excess. Yeah. Yeah. So try those stain pads. Um, and just like really spread, like, uh, we're spreading, spreading. And then if you see, if you watch that video, you see, I go back with the, with a real dry pad and I go back and almost like face it off. Um, like you would do with the oil paint. Um, and it does a great job. Uh, but yeah, all the handrails, everything that we brushed, we had to go back and wipe, um, which is a pain in the butt. Um, and again, make sure that when you're wiping, you're putting those rags out on the, uh, grass to dry out and then putting them in water um let's see 
Let's uh, let's get in. I got more questions popping up. Uh, but unlike the Penifin, the Armstrong Clark is going to be much less apt to lap. That's why we like it so much. Um, it has a bunch of non-drying oils, so when you're in direct sunlight, um, you're not you don't have to worry about lap marks the way. Uh, in my experience, it's been a while since I used Penifin, but I we've used Penifin in the past. Um, we've used Mesmer's in the past. Uh, they're both oil. That's good, but they do lap. They have a tendency to lap. Um, and the Armstrong Clark is really, really nice in the way it's very forgiving with lap marks. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. So I'm going to start answering questions. Um, the job where you, where the contractor will not hold you to it. Do you put that in writing the job where the contractor will not hold you to it? Uh, no, we don't put that in writing. Um, this is, uh, it's definitely like, um, I should, like if I was, I, I should put it in writing. Um, maybe I'll put that in a text message. That's a good point. Uh, the guys, he's a stand-up guy. They're uh, old school. You know, there's a couple contractors we work for. That Actually, that new construction that we're starting next week is that is the kind of guy, it's like, it's a handshake agreement and it's, it is like, that's everything. So I, I'm going to still send him a thing, but it, a few of these guys, you develop these relationships and they're just, like the old school guys are much more like man of their word, like whatever you say, just like they're just going to do the right thing. Um, but I definitely have a, a tr I'm a very trusting person and I think I could probably ha be better with stuff like that. Um, that's funny. He said, I trust nobody. I should probably send him a text message just like, Hey, for the record, can you just please say, say okay to this? But really it's like, it's a, it's about the designer we have a great relationship with the designer. Um, she's on board. Um, she brought us in on the project. We're probably going to do some more lime uh, plaster work on this job too. Um, the guy's a good guy. I just don't see us getting burned. He paid me in full for the project before we started. Um, so I don't, I just, there hasn't been any red flags like that. Um, so I, I, I'm not really worried. I, I do, I take his word that um, if things don't go well and we have to redo it, that he'll repay us. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't do that with everyone. Um, it's case by case and I should really have, I, I could be better in that way. That has cost me four. Although even if I had a contract, I'm kind of like you, I would just move on, cut my losses. Yeah. We've talked about that before. I think, um, having clear, like writing things out is a good idea. Um, uh, but if someone wants to screw you, they're kind of going to screw you. Um, it depends on a lot of stuff, but, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I don't foresee that happening. Um, and if we're lucky, we'll just spray it out and everything will work and we'll be good. I'm cracking a lemon cello, um, LaCroix. If you haven't had lemon cello, my gosh, it's delicious. It's like lemon with like vanilla at the end. It's phenomenal. I'm a big fan. I went to BJ's and bought like 180 cans of seltzer the other day. I have a problem. Uh, let's see. Let's go to another question. Um, three sim. I'm going to save that one because that's that one's going to go deep. What do you recommend for an over the paint for an over for an over paint protector for cabinets? Seacoast, I'm going to ask you to clarify that question. Um, yes, LaCroix is not sponsoring this feed, but if you want to sponsor this feed, LaCroix, let me know. You, I'll send you my address and you can send me plenty of this. Um, I also, I'm a really big fan of the key lime pie, LaCroix. The lime is okay. The key lime pie is phenomenal. Um, back to these questions. Again, Seacoast, if you're still here, uh, what do you mean by what do you recommend for an over the paint protector for cabinets? Um, I'm guessing you're talking about a clear coat. Um, in which case I, I know guys do it. I've heard, um, differing opinions on it. We don't apply clear coats over our paint, uh, as a general rule. I'm not sure I've ever actually done that. Um, I've heard horror stories. I think Jekko was on here and mentioned, um, when people who are using like a, a tinted pigmented primer and then putting clear coats over the top how that can really mess with the color if you're not putting the exact amount of clear on every surface afterwards. Um, so I would be careful. Um, I will say that if you're looking for durability, uh, and someone asked me actually to talk about um, 
paint and get a little bit more like nerdy onto the paint stuff. Uh, we did a little bit with Jekko, but we can get into it more. Um, there's sort of the chemistry and coatings and the different types of coatings specifically for cabinets. Um, the gold standard is, is a, what well, is called a 2K poly or it, it's a 2, 2K refers to like, it's a two part. There is an A and a B and you mix them together. So when someone says 2K something, it's, it's an A and a B mixed together. Um, poly is polyurethane. Uh, you might, we like to, I like to say 2K urethane sounds better. You know, polyurethane people think of as a clear coat for floors. Um, more as at least what I think of. And it's, you know, when we tell a client we're going to use a 2K urethane, um, it just sounds a little bit better, but that is the gold standard for durability. Um, as far as I know that you're not going to find a more durable coating than a spe specifically solvent based, a solvent based 2K urethane is as good as it gets. Um, water-based 2K urethane is slightly less durable, but I essentially, you can just put them in their own category. Durability is right there. Um, Fine Paints of Europe Oil Enamel is actually right on line with um, water-based 2K urethane. There's been some, like, I've seen some third-party tests where Holland Lack, when it's cured, has the durability of a water-based 2K poly. Um, from there, you, you, the next step down is then conversion varnish. Conversion varnish... Um, doesn't have the durability characteristics of a 2K poly, but it's it's pretty durable. Um, that's the closest thing to 2K poly would be um, conversion varnish. It, that's probably, I believe that's primarily, that's that's the main coating on cap, custom on, on cabinets that are being produced today in America. Um, if you buy cabinets, higher end cabinets from a cabinet manufacturer, you're probably gonna get, um, Oh yeah, polyesters. That's another beast I don't know a ton about. We've used polyester primers in the past. Um, I know that it that's a three-part product. Um, polyesters are they have they're not good for exterior though, I believe, right? They're we'll have to have someone come on and talk about polyesters. I don't use a ton of them. Um, I'm not sure how they rank actually. But I know we've used it and I know that there's three parts and two of the parts, if they're mixed, will like explode. So it's 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 a very dangerous product. You don't wanna just like play around with it. Um, and you wanna make sure everybody knows what's going on. Yeah, polyester is not good for exterior. Um, it's a very high solids product. I know that, that's what we've used it in the past. Uh, that pool table I posted actually recently, um, we used a isolator uh, we sand it to bare wood, we used an isolator, and then we used a polyester uh, primer, multiple coats of polyester primer to build up, uh, that was a deep, deep oak grain. Um, yes, cobalt peroxide, don't mix those together because you're going to you're gonna have some uh, issues, right? Um, polyesters, I feel like polyesters are, I don't know, I don't know a lot of people who are using them. Um, I know that a, there, a lot goes into that, a three-part when things are going to explode, um, I don't know. I, I, I would like to hear from someone who uses a lot of them and, and why. I know they have a very high build. I know when people are doing gloss and they're going to polish, they like to use polyesters. Um, but again, not good for the outside. So when we're doing an entry door and we're doing fine paints of Europe, um, you know, you're not going to be doing entry doors in polyester. Um, great for building hardness. So yeah, you have conversion varnish. Um, that's that's good. Um, it's not great. Um, from that below that, there's like pre-cat lacquers, um, and their post-cat lacquer, I guess, would probably be the next most durable. Um, it's still a two-part, and it's gonna you mix it together. Um, again, anyone of you guys who wants to correct me or add more information to this, please do. But um, I don't know who Nick P is. PD. Nick PD, who are you? You're requesting to join. Um, I, I'm just not going to let people on. I don't know. I'm sorry, man. Um, yeah, so post-cat lacquers. I feel like I don't know many people who are using post-cat lacquer. Maybe there are people who are using it, but I'm not aware of why you would ever use a post-cat lacquer at this point. Um, very few people do that I'm aware of. Um, and then you have the pre-cat lacquers, um, which are really fast, really cheap, really easy to use, um, but they're not super durable. 
So to his question, if you, I'm assuming you're painting them and then... All right, you're a person. Probably this is the toughest by far than 2K year thing. Okay. Um, but polyester, you have to use that isolator coat, right? It's It, it can be temperamental going other over um, other coats. Yeah, post-cat lacquer, I, I don't know anyone that uses it. Um, at that point, you might as well just use conversion varnish or that. Which, I know a lot of people use conversion varnish because they they have it dialed in. I get it. Um, I know Jekko does. Now, we, now I know you. Send me a DM. Let's talk. Um, I just, I'm weary of like bringing on people I don't know. Um, no offense, but send me a DM. Um, yeah, so the pre-cats, um, yeah, you need to isolate under the, po the poly, the polyesters I know are very finicky. And if you don't put an isolator coat down first, so I don't think that's a good answer, a good, um, option. I believe, I wish, um, our friend was on here still who asked the question. His question was, what do you recommend for overpaint protector for cabinets? I'm guessing that he's talking about clear coats again. Um, so what I would probably recommend more is just using a 2K urethane um, throughout the process so that you don't need to put a protective coating on top. Seacoast, what did you mean by that? Um, are you talking about like a, a coating on top of pre already previously painted cabinets? Talking about a paint system, I'm not exactly sure, but use it if if at all possible. I would recommend using a 2K urethane um, process when you're looking for durability. We use it primarily, like we don't go below 2K poly. Like we're either so I build cabinets from my own house. Yeah, I would say um, send me a DM this week, but I would use a water based 2K poly system if I was you, and then you won't need to put anything on top. Uh, we are using a isolator, um, the 2K isolator, 2K primer, and 2K top coat now from Ilva. Um, I painted already for cabinets, and I want to put a good poly on it. All right. Well, in that case, um, I would think you could put a a water-based 2K poly over the top, clear. Um, depending on, I'm not sure what you have on it before. Um, yeah, poly poly feels good. It, it depends, man. I, I, so oil enamel to me is the gold standard. There is nothing better on cabinets than oil enamel, good oil, um, fine paints or something like that. Um, oil enamel, you want to talk about feel. Oh man, there's nothing better. Uh, but it adds a lot of cost. Like if you're trying to produce a cabinet job, like we are, we are, I mean, I'm 425, $450 a a, a door drawer or panel, um, on a gloss oil job. Um, generally like it's really expensive to do, um, gloss oil. Um, satin oil is still, it's still like 50% more than a 2k urethane. So it really comes down to clients like aesthetic expectation, because I think we've seen that a water-based 2k poly and fine paints of Europe oil enamel, um, are going to end up with the same durability at the end. So if you take a sample board of the two of them and put them next to each other, um, I would argue that the oil is going to look better. Uh, Sal says, I usually use emerald urethane hybrid paint on cabinets, and I usually do not poly over it. Um, yeah, all right. So then that's fine. And, and it, man, like... I get it, and if that's the market that you're in, and that's what the market can bear, like, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, gener I mean, yeah. Um, I will tell you that if you're looking to get into the higher end, or you're looking to sell jobs for more money, and offer clients a better option, I sell water-based 2K poly jobs against people who are using um, 1k trim paints from Benjamin Moore and Sherman Williams all the time for twice the price of what sometimes more than twice the price um but for more you can get a lot more money to use a system like an Ilva 2k poly system all the way through um it's just it's apples to oranges um I know that there's plenty of markets where the clients just can't afford um sort of the the higher end option of a water-based 
Yeah, then if you're getting that kind of money, man, I, I don't think, I think you're doing your clients a disservice by not using a water-based poly, 2K poly. Um, that's, those are good numbers. That's, we're just a little bit more than that for water-based 2K. Um, I, I just, I'm, I, I wouldn't feel awesome about using emerald urethane hybrid on cabinets. Um, that's just, that's just me. Um, I don't think it's a cabinet paint. I think it's a trim paint. I think Advance is a trim paint. Um, cabinets, I, I think, again, it comes down to budget. But if clients have the budget, I, I believe we should be offering them a paint, a coating system that's more robust than what we put on the trim that comes from the, the paint store. Um, Benjamin Moore and Sherman Williams have lots of good paint. But cabinets, I, I don't know. That's just my personal, like there are some amazing products out there. I mean, there's plenty of guys who are using 2K Poly um, on trim, right? Like, it's it's tough. I'm not in I'm not in certain markets, but I'll tell you, if you're getting that money, a I think you can turn around the job faster. I mean, I know you can. A water based 2K Poly system has a lot of advantages in that in its dry time. Um, we put infrared heaters on stuff, and it's cured. You're, you're, you're cured overnight and you're packing stuff up and moving it to the job without any worries. Dark colors, doesn't matter. We sprayed a job. Um, we had some, we had an issue with, um, some cabinets last week and we brought them back on a Wednesday, sprayed them, sprayed them on Thursday, delivered them, sprayed them on like late Thursday and delivered them Friday morning, wrapped them all up. Um, and it, it's just, there's nothing like it. If you sprayed that with a 1K, and, and so it just it goes to show you like what's happening with that product. Anytime you have two products that that exist separately in their containers, and then when they are mixed, a clock starts. The chemistry of the hardness and the durability that's going to come from that system cannot be compared to very many one-part systems. Um, Oh yeah, so uh, Breston, who's that? Um, who said the biggest thing is they don't sell Fine Paints of Europe near me. Fine Paints of Europe is an absolute expert at shipping paint. There are a number of certified painters across this country who had sh paint shipped to them for extended periods of time and eventually ha found local dealers to supply it because they were buying it. So I would encourage anyone who, ha who sees that as a roadblock to call Fine Paints of Europe on Monday, talk to Emmett or Charlie, they're amazing. And they will ship you out paint like this. I know there's some guys on here. Um, who did I see earlier? Chade, I think, is on here. He's had paint shipped to him. Um, you know, they'll ship out paint to you, and they'll ship you these little Dutch mints as well and, like, awesome literature. I remember getting – actually, I've gotten shipments from them. Um, it's it's cool. I would highly recommend ordering some paint from them. Uh, Breston asked about lacquer. Um, we talked a little bit about that. Pre-cat lacquer is a, yeah, Turner and Breston have both had paint shipped from them. Um, yeah, pre-cat lacquer has, again, like, I, I'm not, I haven't thought a lot about it, but I'm not sure why you would use, I'm not even sure why you would use, um, like a advance or, um, emerald urethane when there's pre-cat lacquer um we don't use a lot of, we don't use it but i've used it in the past but pre-cat lacquer is going to dry even faster um and it, i don't see the a difference between pre-cat lacquer and advance as far as durability i could be wrong i'd love to see um at some point we're probably going to have to do some like serious testing of this stuff um just to like have the test as part of like the show we'll start to do some tests um Send me suggestions for, for uh, like, actual A-B tests that you guys want to see. Um, oh, you know who probably has this answer? is We could go on Eric Reason's YouTube right now, and we could probably find out durability of a pre-cat lacquer versus a advance. Um, maybe. If he doesn't have it, we should all like, implore him to do it because he's really good at that stuff. Um, yeah, like, we just uh, – I'll tell you that I just – I, I sell – projects for way more money against guys who are specking inferior inferior coding systems to our coding system on a regular basis but that's because we're in a market where people want really good they want quality 
And so when I'm able to go, well, here's, I bet you if their price is that, I bet you they're using this or this. That was a John Shearer technique that uh, he taught me. Uh, we're still, I'm working hard to get him on this show because that is an impressive man. I love my talks with John. He's so smart. Um, but he often talks about selling against people where you know what they're using and and just like explaining to clients and about like, okay, I, if they're at that price, I know they're using this. Um, and it's, you know, it's fine. It's, it's fine. But if you want a robust system, people want their cabinets to last. They, they beat them up. Um, you know, it is what it is. How does 1K urethane like Envirolac rank in your books? Um, I mean, I think the 1K urethanes, I, I don't I don't you know a lot about them. I just don't know why you would use them. Um, you know, for add the hardener in and... But again, I, I think the a one k urethane is is like it's like using advance or emerald, but having faster dry times. So if nothing else, just upgrade to that, and you got and you'll make more money, and you'll have a quicker system. Your clients will be happier um, because your dry times will be faster. From what I understand, the one k uh, urethanes from the uh, Italian companies have real fast dry times. Um, it's like bringing a Ferrari to an old car show. I don't know what that. I've, I lost what that reference was too, but, um, Ferraris are awesome, right? I've been working seven years in residential painting in Manhattan, but I've never seen a paint job like you, man. Great job. Keep it up. Thank you. That's funny you say that because there are a lot of guys in Manhattan that are doing unbelievable work. Um, you may just not have been on the right job sites. Manhattan has some like, like unheard of gem companies. Just insane talent. I mean, there's obviously massive money in Manhattan. You know, people with twenty, forty million dollar uh, apartments, and they they want their houses painted. There's a guy actually. We should get on. Um, oh man, Sterling Coats. I'm gonna see if I can get Sterling Coats um, on. They do a ton of work in Manhattan, and they they're just like, again, they're these, anytime you can get a large amount of painters to work really efficiently, it's it's always very impressive. I've, I've spoken to him before and they have these like windows in Manhattan when like everyone goes out to the Hamptons for like the summer and they want all the work done and they have to do a ton of work in this short period of time. Uh, Manhattan's a crazy market. Um, the pricing there is, is something like I talked to Chris and the same job it can be almost double the price when you go into the city just because of all of the things that go into dealing with these buildings when you're going up and down you're I mean these they're paying off regularly they're paying off the elevator guys and the the people in the in the um these large buildings large sums of money to make so that they run the elevator smoothly for them and they let them get in and out and you know because everyone's trying to work in these service elevators and if you have not greased some palms that job could take you three times as long um if when you hear uh Actually, I'm going to get Jody uh, Finglas or um, Kieran Cassidy from uh, New York Fine Finishes on here. Those guys have some unbelievable stories of like what it's like to work in Manhattan. Um, I can't imagine. I, Boston's tough, but it's nothing like Manhattan. Um, uh, yeah, it, I would suggest trying a water-based 2K Poly. Um, I'm going to get to... Jake, your question. How many people? We have nine painters right now. Um, how do you determine your price for the new construction project, square feet or mandates? We have, um, I've moved to a square foot um, estimating for new construction. Um, we don't do very many of them and we don't win very many of them. And I don't want to spend a bunch of time on them. Um, so thanks to the help of, again, Chris from Shoreline, we have some coefficients that we would that we multiply square footage of the property by, and those coefficients are sort of determined by um, how much trims in the house, how much decorative stuff there is, you know, all the different things, and sort of based off of the job, you sort of give a square footage um, price, and then we generally will do two or three different options on a job where we'll do like our signature line. I actually have a project a bid out right now. Uh, it's sort of like a signature. It's like a crazy um, custom finish on all the trim. Um, as high end as it gets everywhere, if money wasn't an option. And then we have like 
a premium option and then we have a, our baseline which is still you know way more than everybody else is generally how do you feel seeing other contractors working on your project with different standards um yeah that's just sort of like jessica taught me that like that's just sort of a fact of life um and like does it hurt my heart a little bit like definitely just to see sort of you know the way some guys will treat job sites like luckily we're not on many we're like even the project that gloss project we're on like that painter actually brought us into that project uh the one in beacon hill that we're getting ready to start he brought us into it um and it, those, his guys were good but yeah they're on a different they're just doing things differently they're being i mean the pricing is different for those guys um i i would argue that they do it to themselves but um i don't really you know it's neither here nor there um yeah we see guys doing some really crazy stuff uh, i've been on jobs uh where it's like like especially with jessica when she's i've, I've visited her on jobs she's always on jobs with other painters and, and you, like she's constantly like saving them from themselves um trying to like you know you just see some crazy stuff i mean everyone's seen it uh especially in the city you'll see some crazy stuff but um, I think you just got to keep your head down, focus on what you're doing. That's how we're looking at it. Like I was on that, that actually that metal job, um, that we're doing, there was a number of things that I saw on that house that I wanted to point out. Uh, but it's not my, it's not my job to point those things out. When I was younger in my career, I was definitely that guy who was much more ego driven. And I was, I would point out stuff like that. Um, even stuff like there was some fundamental carpentry errors, on a deck actually. And I think they actually ended up fixing it without me saying anything. But in the past, I would have let everybody know that they should have had a larger gap between those boards. Uh, instead, I think somebody figured it out anyway. Um, but I think the secret to working with other contractors on a project is sort of keeping your head down, focusing on your goals, which, which this is a great metaphor to life. Um, actually, I had a great conversation with John Shear about this. Um, but just like, what are your goals? What are your, what are you going after? And staying focused on that and not letting the distractions pull you aside. Um, I would say it's sort of the same thing with working with other paint contractors on your job. It's like, I mean, I, when I first started, I can remember being that guy, but in the, like not paint contractor, but being like the less professional contractor on the job and always just like feeling like kind of crappy. So now I kind of remember that. And it's just like, you know, just keep your head down and focus on what you're up to and what you're doing. And, you know, they got there, they're doing their job. Clients happy because their numbers were where they needed it to be. Um, yeah, it's like we talked about no rubbernecking. Um, rubbernecking is never good in life. Don't do it if you can help it. It takes effort not to rubberneck, not to be distracted from your goals. Um, but that's where I think like continuing to understand what are your goals and like reiterating them and it's like focusing on them. And, uh, a smart man told me don't have too many goals because eventually they start to contradict each other. So figuring out what they are and really honing in on them, um, I think is, is, is very valuable and checking in on that. Uh, you don't have to make friends, just don't make enemies. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think it's very valuable to not piss people off on a job site. I, I delivered a couple doors, uh, to a job a few months ago. Um, and I was leaving and there was no locks on the garage and there was a missing door on the garage at the time. And it was a new construction. It was like a rough job site. And I was by myself. The person who was supposed to help me wasn't there. Um, and I unloaded like, you know, the doors are probably $10,000 a piece by the time they've been painted and built and they're on my expensive racks. And like, I'm dropping off twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 worth of like, equipment and thing like product on this job site. And I use like a couple of the trim carpenters had helped me and I made sure to give them both like nice tips, even though they helped me for five minutes. But I was like, I want these guys to be my friend. Like, I, you know, this is not an adversarial thing. I want them on my side. Um, and I think there's a lot to be said for keeping friends and not making enemies. That's a good point. Um, all right, let's keep going. What do you think about partnerships and how have you been scaling to 1 million? How has it been scaling to 1 million by yourself? I'll tell you that for most of my career, I have wanted to have a partner. 
Uh, I still would love to have a partner. I think companies that have a successful partnership uh, can do better than companies who are run by a single individual. Um, but it's really hard to find a powerful partnership. The guys from Pallet Pro are a gold are the gold standard for partnerships. I mean, they they've been best friends for like you can't recreate it though. They've been best friends forever. They have very offsetting skill sets. They have very aligned goals and um, values. So it's like they're like the perfect storm of partnerships, and it's allowed them to grow their company fairly large, fairly fast. Um, and you know, so I I would I think partnerships are great, but you. I've I get I'm in the middle of a sort of a falling out of a partnership in another company that I, I was a partner in, and it's uh, partnerships are tough and I don't know if you can if you have one where like you're a yin and a yang, but you have aligned values and you clearly put everything up front and it's all lawyers take care of all that stuff and you have a very clear then I think partnerships are great. And I think that you can really um, get someplace pretty fast if you have that. But it's also, I think, really, really hard to find. And most partnerships don't work out. Um, so just be careful. I've gotten to here by sure will, determination, and a whole lot of luck. Um, and, and just, I don't know, luck. Yeah, everyone has, I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've gotten lucky. I've, I had a vision. I've, I've worked really hard. Um, I'm a really good painter that helped. Um, and I'm constantly like, I'm, I'm obsessed with learning. Like I'm, I read books every day. Um, as I drive, I'm reading a book always. Um, I'm, I'm listening to podcasts. I'm talking to people. I'm, I'm trying to learn and get better every day. Um, someone I was talking to this week and I'm talking about like stuff and like ideas going back and forth. Like I think that's been a huge part of my success is just like, I'm always thinking and I'm trying to talk with people who are also thinking and like, you know, whatever, you have issues or successes or whatever, like ideas, humans with ideas bouncing back and forth is so powerful. Um, the smartest person in the world in isolation is not going to do nearly what they could do if they were connected with other great people, smart people who are thinking about things. Um, oftentimes it doesn't even have to be, like people in your business necessarily, but like I talk to my wife about something and she talks to me a lot about her work and uh, I'll, it's so over my head. She's a scientist and she'll like talk about like this crazy stuff. And then uh, at the end of the talk, she'll be like, oh yeah. <laughs> and she'll have like arrived at an answer that she sort of talked out with me. I didn't add really much anything except for a, uh, a human that was alive there listening. Um, but yeah, I think anytime you can like talk to your, to people around you, I think my, my greatest asset has been, um, the ability to continue to learn all the time and to stay humble and to try to not let ego, I think ego might've driven a lot of it in the beginning, but it drove it from like the back seat and probably still does. It drives it from the back seat. Uh, but I have come to believe that like I just finished reading The Ego is the Enemy. Actually, anyone who has a book recommendations. I think Ego is the Enemy is a great book. Um, I talk about it all the time. I think, um, um, well, How to Win Friends and Influence People. That's like another like just classic book. Um, I think uh, Understanding Michael Porter is a like paradigm shifting book in my eyes. Like, I don't think I understood. I still don't understand it at all. But um, I think I had a very naive idea of what competitive advantage is. I think that's the point of the book is most people don't really understand what competitive advantage means um, and how to like actually build it into your business model. Um, I like the idea of thinking about our small companies and, and looking to the big companies for guidance and like how best practice uh, because the big companies have gotten so many things right. Large corporations are incredible at running businesses, right? They have thousands and thousands of employees and they run and they make profit and they employ people. And it's like, I have nine people and it's, that's incredibly difficult. How do you do that at scale? Well, it comes from having a bunch of very sound business practices. Um, so I think 
as much as when I first started, I didn't want to be big, man. And I'm a small company and blah, 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 right? That was all like being too afraid to, to aspire to real greatness. Um, and when you see really successful paint companies, and at the end of the day, it's reminded to me, it's, I get reminded a lot. A successful paint company is one that makes money and has happy clients, right? And has happy employees. Like, but why are, you're in business to make money. Uh, I think I've missed that for quite a while. I'm working on it. Um, I think that also helped me get here is I was not super uh, greedy. Not even, I, that's, that sounds terrible. I, no, I was just not looking at the numbers. And, and I think, you know, the best paint, the best painters aren't on here talking like this. They're out there making money. And there's something to be said for that. You know, it, it's not about being nice. It's about making money, employing people, giving them a positive place to come to work, making clients happy. Um, that stuff is valuable. And I don't know if that gets talked about enough. Um, what is the best way to obtain leads? Uh, I mean, for, for me, it's been Instagram like 100%. Um, Instagram and referrals. Um, but the strong referral that comes from Instagram is like nothing else. Um, I think, you know, building out a platform on Instagram is fastest is the fastest way you could probably do it. And then, cause then every time you have a client, your client can follow you, they can watch the project and they can refer you to their friends using Instagram or Facebook. Um, that's a powerful way to, to get referrals from the clients you have today. Um, it's much better than here's my business card. Please give it to your, all your friends. Like that's just not that effective. Before you started, before you start using Fine Paints of Europe, which brand did you use? Um, I used primarily. I used Sherwin Williams, uh, but I used I I used Benjamin Moore's Advanced Trim Paint. Um, we still, I mean, that job I I posted that Navy um, cabinet job. Well, it was built-ins with a bunch of trim. That whole job was Advance. Uh, I think Advance is a great product for a trim. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a really good product. Um, so I I was, but I used a lot of Sherwin Williams pro products as well. Um, uh, we talked about this last time. There's advantages and disadvantages to using only one brand. Um, but I'm not sure that we need to get into that again. How does one start advertising on Instagram? Um, you start to document your everyday experience as a painter and what your company is doing. That's it. You like it's, I didn't invent this. Gary V was probably the first one that said it about Instagram at least, but I heard it from him. It's document. Don't create. Uh, if so, we have to assume that like all things being equal, first off, you're good at paint. You're a good paint company. You offer good value to your clients. You're a value in the market, right? Um, if that's the case, then just document what you're doing every day. And that's a muscle. I, I've recently, I've found, um, I've, it's been brought to light um, how high of, my, how my skills at social media and video and photo editing have grown. To me, it's just like obvious because it sort of was very like, rudimentary um, video editing, photo editing and posting on social media. Like I, I didn't take formal classes and it just sort of like happened and like I wanted to get better. I didn't like how that looked. I saw someone else had a better looking picture. How do I make that happen? Uh, again, it's that learning thing. But I, I, we've recently hired an intern and you know, he's a smart kid. He's got a successful YouTube channel. Um, and some of his videos were like not that awesome. They weren't performing well on TikTok. And I, I took the video, I edited the video, very two little tweaks, put it back up and it f took off. And what you realize is like anything, it's a muscle. So start flexing today with the one pound weight and studying people who are doing it better than you. That's what I did. And, and practicing every day and magically your social media will get better. But I think you have to take a step back and go, what makes my company special? Why would someone want to hire me? And then start to hone in, write that down, right? Okay, X, Y, and Z are the three things that make us great. 
now start, what are the types of posts I can make that will demonstrate that? It will be finished photos. Like, obviously, everyone loves finished photos. You know what I can't stand on social media, and someone tell me that I'm wrong, is a before and after photo that's sliced down the middle in any way, and there you see both of them in the same picture. Most of the time, they're done by, they just look so crappy. Now, you, I'm sure you can do it well. I've done side-by-sides before. Um, but generally, like, these just, like, you see some of these, like, mid-tier companies, mid-sized companies who have probably some social media person running their account who post these pictures. And they, neither picture looks good, the before or the after. They've not edited the picture. There's a couple companies I was thinking of specifically that I'm just like, what? Like, I don't know. Self-awareness. Is another one of those things that I think is very important in people. And like, I think I've always looked at like, who do I want to be like? Who's killing the game? Who's two, three, four steps ahead of me? And and trying to reverse engineer some of that success. So I think bright pictures, like right off the rip. If you have a dark, like shadowy picture, man, like bright, like you can go. Everybody right now, take a picture. Go into your your phone and you can edit the picture on your phone. You can edit in my, on my iPhone. I can edit brilliance, exposure, shadows, highlights, contrast. Um, and then a few other ones, but highlights, I'm sorry. Um, exposure, brilliance, shadows. Those three things are your friend. Use them, brighten that picture up. Um, if you like, there's nothing wrong with making the before picture look bad. Sometimes that, that's actually better. Um, just take it as is. But brighten up your pictures and then learn to vi- edit video. Uh, I use Premiere Rush. Uh, it's it's a very, I wasn't very, it's an easy platform to edit video with. Um, watch a couple YouTube videos, play around with it. But again, brighten. Even my team, like half my team posts stuff. They don't, they're not taking the time to edit stuff. I get it. But like brighten this stuff up. Um my photographer sent me a bunch of pictures this week. A professional photographer. He's a, like a very famous architectural photographer. And I still, those pictures from the basement, and I brightened them up to put them on Instagram. And we talked about it. We're going to change. His photos for me are going to be for social media, where the editing for social media of photos is actually different than for print or uh, for like websites and stuff. So we're going to shoot in a square, and we're going to brighten up. He was saying like... He, like it's funny to hear like a professional photographer. He's like, yeah, that washed out look, uh, that's so popular. I'm like, yeah, you can call it washed out. You call it what you want, but it gets attention. Um, so playing with that, right. Editing stuff, seeing how it performs, looking at like, what pictures do you see that you like from other people? Um, so that's, that's how I would start. I would start by writing down what makes my company special what types of posts can I make that will demonstrate that? And then start underneath those, those types of posts. Start just like riffing ideas. And then every day, so I don't have that written down. It's like it, That sort of evolved in my head over like the last four years. Um, but that's sort of what you need to do is, is have a plan. I see a lot of companies who are posting like all willy-nilly and they don't have a set plan or they don't have a voice. More than anything, more than anything, you have to have a voice. Like, whatever it is, I have a way of, if you read all my captions, I hope they all sound like they're being written by the same person. Hopefully me. Um, but I there's there's just my, who I am. Yeah, Phil, you are the shadowy team member. But so is Dan. <laughs> so is everybody. But that's just taking it one step further and editing especially on your company's page, especially on final stuff, but on anything like brighter is always better on social media. Um, tell me I'm wrong, but I, I think, I think that that's, that's a general rule that you can stand by. Um, I just lost track of what I was talking about. Um, I'm not going to say their names. I forget their names. Um, but I know, I, I know, a couple, I know them. I know about them. I can tell you different things about them, uh, but I know they have, some person in the office who's doing it and the the boss doesn't really think it's that important. No one's sending her to training or him to training. Like 
it's just a thing that someone told them they were supposed to do, so they do it. Um, but if you want, oh, that the question was, how do you start? Um, oh, and and if you're posting, I would suggest never posting a single picture. If you go back and look at my feed, I, I cross my fingers, but I I bet it's been a very long time since I posted a single picture. Um, anytime you if you post multiple pictures in a carousel, Instagram will quite often post like they'll feed you my pic my post. You'll see the first picture, and then later in the day or some other time, they'll feed you the second picture in my carousel. So that same post will hit somebody twice or three times. If they're like, so not doing single pictures will help you get more engagement. Um, video will get you way more engagement than pictures, hands down. That, that's not even like, a, a, I mean, it's not even close. Um, you have to have the most, if you look, like I had a, a post this week, that, that cabinet job um, has almost a thousand likes. That, if I look at my engagement numbers on that post, that's like a top, top, top post for me. Um, the engagement numbers on that picture are nothing like my average video posts. Instagram rewards posts that keep people on platform. All social media does. It rewards posts that keep people on the platform. Instagram likes when people stay on Instagram. So if you make content that make pe that keeps people on Instagram, Instagram will feed it to other people. I have posts now that have hundreds of thousands of views because something about that post, if you go look, I've been, I've been very interested in this. I made a post today and I purposely made it a minute and five seconds long. I wanted it to go to IGTV because IGTV videos are getting fed up to people for much longer. I have, I mean, that the video of me building that table, the complete video of that me building that table has over half a million views now. It was being served up to people for well over six weeks. I was getting, I would go to my feed and there'd be a bunch of likes from that picture four, five, six weeks later. Um, and, and it was just steadily trickling up. And so IGTV is being rewarded now. If you can, and then the cool little metric that you can see in IGTV is um, percentage um, watched, the percent watched. If you can get a video over 25, 23, 25, I've had a couple, I, the, the video I had that went to a million views had like a 33% watch rate. Um, the one that went to 500, I think had like a 28 or something like that percent watch rate. The one I have right now has like a 20, or no, has 23%. And that's at like 160,000 views and it's still going weeks, well not, a couple weeks later, I think. So video is going to reward. So, and then having a, so like give it time, like you're going to build your following, like you have to give it time because the social proof that will come with, um, having a larger following will help you sell jobs. There's no question. Um, document daily with informative caption and tag your location and location you want to target. Yeah. Tag your locations. Um, we'll talk about hashtags. I see. I get so like the second the like the clock starts ticking up at the top, I start like freaking out. We have a minute, 33 seconds. Um, but yeah, so I would say figure out what you're good at. Start to document it. Take the time. Like go right now. If you don't, go on Amazon and buy at least one tripod. They're like 40 bucks. I, I should, I'll, I could show you the one that I use. I have like four of them now. They're not expensive. Just have a tripod with you. Like I just posted that video today. I'm about to stay in a deck. It's like, no, just stop for a second. Set the tripod up. Set the camera. Turn it on. And move the camera around as you work. Like it's a little thing. But start to do it. Because once you do some stuff, like we missed out on a, a couple things. We've missed out on some stuff before. And I'm like, no, like that was, that was gold content that we can never get back again. We should have a show just on the subject. Well, we can. This is like one of my most one of my favorite topics. So we can just, the next hour, I could just riff on this and you keep asking questions for a while. Uh, although I should answer the other people's questions. Maybe we will next week. We'll go even deeper. Um, but there's 30 seconds left. Again, thanks for watching this far. I'm going to end it real quick. I'm going to pop back in and we'll just keep talking. Um, and we're going to talk about hashtags in a minute.